they be cramping my style all week. Craving chocolate trees, checking pants, checking seeds, sipping herbal tea, and fight for menstrual equity. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Hey, hey, I get cramps at. Hey. Get cramps at. Hey. tuned in to the Kick Cramps Ass podcast with your host, Brittany Walker, advocating for menstrual equity, period poverty, and womb wellness. New episodes on Menstruation Mondays. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Kick Cramps Ass podcast, where I'm your host, Brittany Walker. Happy Menstruation Monday. You made it to season two, episode 16, where we'll be discussing using herbalism as an alternative to womb healing, rooted in flow part two. Now, you know, last week we had an opportunity to talk to Brianna Harris. We we're talking about the yoga side of things with rooted in flow. And then today we're going to roll into um, the herbalist section. So we're so excited about our two part episode. All right, guys. So we'll be bringing Amber Nicholson on in just a moment. Now, you know, it's June, so it is Pride Month. You know, we're always going to celebrate for all of those who menstruate. And then we just had Juneteenth last week. So, you know, we're still feeling the good old vibes from the ancestors. And of course, talking about herbalism today, you know, we have on our resource center, a book suggestion section where we have all these different type of herbalisms books that we took back from ancient African history, African American slave uh, slavery history. And you know, I don't like to say slave, our enslaved ancestors, but we're just so excited all what June has to bring. All right, guys. So it is Monday, June 24th. You know, we always like to kick off each episode with the I am power statement. I representing inspiration, A representing affirmation, and M representing manifestation. And today's I am power statement is I am open to using herbalism to restore my womb using natural medicine directly from the earth. Ashe. So there it is. Now, you know, we roll into the quote of the day. And today's is a person who finds a herb has found a cure. And that's by Michael Bassey Johnson. Now, you know, we always like to have our tea of the day. You know, we're always sipping on our cramp elixir. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back in just a moment. Have you tried our best seller, the cramp elixir? It's our herbal tea blend designed to reduce and eliminate menstrual cramps, PMS symptoms, and other uterine health issues that are hindering your day-to-day -day progress. Our elixir may decrease inflammation, reduce stress and anxiety, regulate blood flow, balance your mood, and it can kick cramps ass. It includes a variety of herbs including hibiscus, red raspberry leaf, calendula, motherwort, awashaganda, plus more. Head over to kickcrampsass.org and grab yours today. Now, back to the show. All right, guys, welcome back from that commercial break. We hope that you enjoyed it. We are so excited about today's guest. We have Amber Nicholson from Rooted and Flow. Now, Amber Nicole is a certified herbalist and wellness coach and group fitness instructor with a wealth of knowledge about the healing properties of plants and natural remedies. Now y'all know we like natural remedies because that's all what we're about. So she has a deep appreciation for the power of nature and incorporates it into all aspects of her life. Now her mission is to help others find balance and vitality in their own life through mindfulness practice, meditation, herbal nutrition, and movement so they can show up as the best version of themselves. Guys, you know, like all of that is everything that we represent. So we're so excited to bring on Amber. Amber, thank you so much and welcome to Kid Cramps Ass Podcast. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We had such an amazing conversation last week with Brianna, and then we were talking to our guest about how we met you guys, how we had the opportunity to come to your festival that you had in Las Vegas, Nevada, November 2023, and we just learned 
every single thing that you guys are doing for the community and just advocating for alternative holistic practices, which I really don't like using alternative. I'm like, you know, holistic is like the original way. Yeah. You know? So we just love <laughs> that everything that you're doing. So may you please tell us more about what is herbalism? Yeah, so herbalism is the practice of working with plant medicine to support health and wellness. It's the people's medicine. It's about connecting the whole of the plant to the whole of the person. And it's really about healing from the roots up. So, you know, getting to the root of any ailment or disease that you're having and really like healing yourself from the root up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And we preach about herbalism on all counts because people hear herbalism and they want to associate it with like witchcraft or it's it's ungodly or you know whatever that case may be and they also hear herbalism they just think about oh you mean like just green tea and it's like no there's so many other things that just green tea that you can focus on so we would like to know what galvanized you to pursue a career as an herbal healer what was that defining moment that was like hmm that like push me into this category or push me into this direction. Yes, my honestly, my own struggles with like health and wellness and just alignment with the the habits that I had and the way that I was living versus you know the quality of life I wanted to have. And I grew up um, in a in a family where we had a garden in the backyard. Like we picked our vegetables and fruits. Like I'd be on the porch with my grandpa, like shucking peas. So you know that's how I grew up. And you know the old, older I got, like more into adolescence and like my early twenties, I did kind of like move away from that living. And I just noticed how how much how I had less energy to do anything that I wanted to do and just the people around me as well like I wanted to set a good example for the people that I care and I love so I got more and more into herbal medicine like I went to school for biology I wanted to be a botanist at first and then I got more into like the herbalism path and started to st study more about plant medicine and connect with herbs and then now I just want to connect as many people as possible to this healing medicine that naturally grows around us and that is put here for us to uh, work with. Absolutely. People don't realize food is medicine. What you put in and on your body is going to determine the illness and the things that you have. People will say, you know, oh, I have the genetic curse of my family. And it's like, you know, illnesses really can't be created by genes because genes can recreate and maintain themselves through the nutrients you're putting in your body. Your cells can reform every 120 days. So it's really that we're just repeating, you know, some of the bain, uh, same bad habits, us just not reading our labels or being aware of the things that we're putting into our body. One of the things that you mentioned was as a kid having a garden in your backyard, my dad literally grows like all his produce. When I go back home to Houston, Texas, I go outside and I go grab something and just bite yes. into it because, <laughs> you know, growing up, I didn't appreciate it as much. Like even mm -hmm. being sick and like, okay, let's go get some aloe vera. Let's go pull these herbs. And I didn't appreciate it then, you know, low vibrational self, not knowing that he's living in that 3D world. But once I got older and became more aware of what the earth really provides to our bodies and we have everything we need on earth to sustain and maintain life longevity yes. it made you made me be like damn i kind of hate that i wasn't like more into that or realizing like our ancestors started agriculture like this is their thing like why yes. why don't we tap into that more so i love that you know everything that you mentioned about how you got started now what influenced you to advocate for health and wellness? We talked about herbalism, but why, how did you take herbalism and say, okay, so now I'm going to take this and pour it into a career or a passion or me wanting to truly serve and educate and help heal others? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, working with herbalism, you have to really get into the root of what's going on. And it's in a holistic practice. So not what only is going on with my body, my mind, my spiritual practice as well. So just like working holistically in that way and seeing the quality of life that it can provide, you know, how we have to fill ourselves up first before we can go out and fill up the world and it becomes contagious, you know, advocating for health and wellness because your health is wealth, you know, your health is 
is how you are going to move through the world. It, you know, if you are a parent, it's something that you're going to pass down to your children. So, you know, every day just advocating for people to really remember where they come from and remember that they're very powerful and that they can change their lives. They can heal themselves and they can, ha they deserve, like it is your right to have health and vitality and feel great about where you are every day. Mm -hmm. I love that. Love that. It's all about pouring back into people. I see nowadays, everybody wants to do a business that has to do with making money. And I'm like, but if you're not serving people, if you're not adding to, you know, how am I going to help resolve problems that people are really having? It's hard to really just flourish and grow like that unless you're on some like capitalism stuff. Right. And so rolling into our next question, it made me think about, well, the question is in relation to menstruation, May you please elaborate on how herbs empowers the womb. And I just want to say that because people hear herbalism, they think, oh, I have to drink herbs. You can extract it in your bath water. You know, you can um, smoke your herbs. You know, you can burn them and let them fill your house and inhale. You know, people don't, you know, you can extract it for food and things of that sort. People just think that, oh, you have to drink it. I don't, I'm not a tea drinker. So that can deter them from herbalism. So can you just elaborate on, you know, with menstruation, how can herbs actually empower the womb? Because you talked about earlier about like rats, red, uh, we talked about red raspberry leaf, things of that sort um, in the cramp elixir, but mm -hmm. in what other ways? Yeah. So, you know, millions, honestly, right now, millions of women are suffering from like uterine fibroids and PMS. And P I personally have PCOS and that's something that I, you know, deal with monthly, you know, something that I'm aware and I'm conscious of. And, you know, many of the medications that we tend to get can kind of feed into these common hormone imbalances because right. there's no one size fits all for everyone because even all of our our periods are different you know so when it comes to herbalism of course i am always one for hand in hand medical practice always consult your doctor before you know using any herbs but also when you are consulting your doctor you can see like hey you maybe you deal with cramps maybe you deal more with hormone imbalances maybe you deal more with a heavy period so when you're going out and you're able to use herbalism to really get down to those root causes and you know show up for yourself every day outside of when it is just the menstruation time of your cycle you know so there's different herbs for when you're in you know, ovulation phase of your cycle. There's different herbs that are nutritive. So, you know, you start taking those a few days before your cycle. So it really can help empower you and really, you know, make you feel powerful going back into the womb. Like the womb embodies the essence of divine feminine energy, um, the wisdom, honestly, the will, wisdom and healing that the womb offers are like the very remedies that like, spirit requires right creativity and and reclaiming this sacred um revenance is a step towards holistic healing and also you know spiritual awakening in a way so yeah that's why i always say working with herbs because working with herbs because you're going to be working side by side you know with changing your habits and you know diet and everything of that nature so yes herbalism is very powerful you know in empowering the womb and it's been used for centuries for centuries you know medicine um communal medicine you know especially for women in communal circles when it comes to like pregnancy birth menstruation things of that nature so yeah absolutely one thing i like to advocate for with herbalism um is Every time I tell my story, people that's been following the podcast, I lost 80 pounds holistically, got rid of my diabetes, my bipolar 2 disorder, my dysmenorrhea, my menorrhagia. It goes on and on. IBS, acute bronchitis. I have blurred vision. I don't have to wear glasses anymore. These are non-prescription. And people are just like, okay, so what herb did you take? Or, you know, what medicine did you take? And I'm like, it's not just one thing. <laughs> it's a mm -hmm. but there are things, like you said, first shifting your mind, realizing like, okay, I have to change habits. I have to change my way of thinking. Everybody around me might be still operating one way, but maybe my body can't handle that. Um, things of that sort, like you said, knowing about herbalism, how long it's been, centuries and centuries. One of my favorite books is Medical Apartheid 
um, it's actually right here by Harriet A. Washington. She has a section about um, back in slavery that the doctors and the slave masters around was chastising the black women that was curing people with herbalism and nutrition. So they were witches and they were getting them killed and things of that sort. But then those same white people were taking that information back to their families and healing their families with it, but then press, you know, pushing Western medicine on us. So I just thought that that was crazy. It just takes you back to how long, you know, these things really work and, it can't be counteracted, like you said, with just that one thing. You have to change the way you eat, what you're drinking, all of that sort. So such a great yes. conversation to get started, guys. We're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Now, navigating to our resource center, we want to give you guys access to all these complimentary resources that we have available for you. We have our blog, book suggestions, our menstrual blood chart, exercise moves to kick cramps ass, we have recipes, we have reports, we have research studies that helps to prove how holistic approaches assist with achieving more wellness. We have wellness tips, wellness referrals so business organizations and individuals that we would like to refer to you that are our strategic partners wound terminology maybe there's some options that you're not aware of this can help you out and lastly yoga moves to help you kick cramps ass feel free to take advantage of this complimentary resource all right guys now back to the show all right, guys, thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed that commercial. So let's get back to it. Now, Amber, what advice would you give to an individual who is wanting to implement herbalism into their wellness practice? I always say, like, start small, you know, start with common herbs, you know, start working with one to two herbs at a time, you know, for more than two weeks, probably a month, to really see how those herbs interact with you. And also, you know, reading books, seeking online knowledge, talking to your lo local herbalist, um, and diving into community as well to find out more. You know, maybe you're starting your journey with someone else and you both can start your journey together. You know, keeping a journal of, of this journey as well to see like where, you, where you've progressed or, you know, what herbs start to call to you more and really listen to your intuition too because mm -hmm. your intuition is there for a reason right and having these energetic exchanges with herbs you will be kind of cold to something more you know so yeah. I love that the the journaling part for me hit the nail on the head we offer menstrual therapy services so with being a licensed nutritionist we it's like going to a psychologist but we strictly deal with how can we help you reverse whatever you don't ailment you're dealing with like you said, PCOS, fibroids, mm -hmm. endometriosis, whatever you have, we can put you on a plan and get that worked on. And with that being said, it's just, I always advise my clients, make sure you journal, journal that process. You will be so shocked at just three months, six months, a year, and then you go back to and look at it and you see your progress. It also opens things to real time of just being patient and just remembering the time it took you to develop them elements. Like if you're 25, 26, it took you that many years to get it. You know, being closer to my age, if you're almost 40, it took you 40 years to get there. So it's going to take some time to reverse. It might take you a few years to really see the difference that you want to see because society has this thing of, okay, overnight success, like, yeah, you, you take this magical <laughs> pill and then you everything's going to be healed and it just doesn't work like that. So I love that you mentioned journaling, like journaling is such a good thing to keep up. With. And we're not saying you have to be all scientific and yeah. all, but just dropping a do few lines. Like you said, hey, I tried these few herbs and it made my body feel like X, Y and Z or it made me feel better. I didn't too much care for it. You know, it's good mm -hmm. for you just to kind of notate that down. And if you don't have a journal, you got a note in your phone like samsung Apple, <laughs> whoever you with you got that little note section that you, you could just go jot things down just to keep track of what you really have going on yes 
I love that. I love that. So how does herbalism positively impact all components of optimal wellness, meaning your mental, your emotional, your spiritual and physical uh, wellness? Because most people just think, oh, physical wellness, I'm tired of being sick or I want to get rid of this, but they don't factor in that herbs can help with your mental capabilities, your emotional balancing hormones, spirituality, yes. like tapping into yourself yes. and your femininity and your divinity. So can we talk about all wellness components? Yes. So, you know, spiritually, like you said, tapping into your femininity, tapping into honestly, just like the energetic energy of of herbs themselves and lots of people do use herbs for their spiritual practice as a way to um you know what is the word i'm looking for as a way to really amplify you know when they are doing their spiritual practices using herbs as an amplifier you know mentally you can help with your cognitive function and also meant when we feel better mentally mentally physically emotionally like especially when we feel better physically our mental health will start to improve as well you know how we see ourselves how we look at ourselves how we move through the world you know and then physically of course you know with herbalism it can help you physically with your body any ailments you might have um anything that you just want to improve on or just sustain and create an overall sense of alignment and balance throughout the body. And then also emotionally, like you said, balance out that those hormones, lower, lowering those cortisol levels, you know, getting yourself out of a, out of a fight or flight mode all the time and really like nourishing your nervous system after a period of burnout. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm always one to say, hey, invest in yourself. You know, if you can't, if you're sick, if you can't move, you can't do things, you can't get things done. You can't fulfill your purpose in this lifetime. So you really can. Not, yeah. So why not look into techniques and methods that it might not be common to you, but if it's been working for years and years and years, why not just try something and invest in yourself? That's, that's a form of like self-love and self-care. Yes, a hundred percent. And a lot of, you know, a lot of the times we think our, our problems are external. Like we, we don't have a, enough money and, and like, this is the job that we want, but really it starts with how we start to take care of ourselves and show up for ourselves first. And then that energy gets broadcast out and then universe is like, okay, I see that you're taking care of yourself. I see, I can start putting a little bit more on your plate and giving you things that are more aligned with this energy now. So always meeting yourself where you're at in life first with that love and compassion so that you can move forward with that for sure you said something like yes the universe is saying hey i can give you more if you are already stressed out if you if it's hard for you to balance your hormones if you don't have time to physically take care of yourself if you're all over the place but you're manifesting i want this i want this I can't give you this boo until you open up some space. Like you got to free up some of those things that are distractions that are invaluable to you. That's preventing you from really becoming your best self. Then I can add some more to your plate. I love the way that you said that that was beautifully said. Yes. Um, so we mentioned earlier about a list of book suggestions through our resource center on our website with many herbalist options. What are some of like your favorite herbalist books or which would you recommend for others to read? Yes. Uh, so African-American herbalism. I love that book. Um, there is a book called Energetic Herbalism that really gets into, yeah, <laughs> gets into the energetic properties of herbs. You get to learn more about, learn a little bit about Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. Um, also any book by Rosemary Gladstar, she is a great, very informative herbalist. Um, the Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. There's also the African Holistic Health book. I love that book. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and then the book, one that I read currently was called Red Medicine, uh, traditional indigenous rites of like birthing and healing. So 
just depending on what route and what things you want to learn about when it pertains to herbalism, there's so much information out there. So I'm like, I always encourage people to, to do their own research and also to find a source that you connect with. Because you did mention earlier about your instinct. Sometimes I think people are so blocked with distractions and what they have going on um, that they're not paying attention to their real instinct. They're like doubting that. And if something, if your body's saying, no, nope, don't do it, you need to pay attention. If your body say, yep, let's try it, then pay attention to that. You also mentioned something earlier about, you know, just taking time for yourself. I was going to say, a lot of people say, well, I can't afford to do this and I can't, I don't have time to do this. I bet you, if you check that screen time, your social media hours are up. You know, I bet you, you didn't put in an Amazon order at least once or twice this month, or, you know, you ordered takeout once or twice. Yes. This month. You know, there's ways that you can start off. We're not saying that you go to an herbalist store and you spend $500 off top, but you can do $10 here. And then in a couple of months, do maybe $13 on a book here and just slowly start investing in yourself or researching for yourself. Cause some people say, well, I don't know what to do to research. I don't know what to do. Well, when you want them pair of shoes, you go look at who got the best price, don't you? You, yeah. go on a trip, you kind of figure out what's going to be the cheapest way that I can go. That's research. So pour that same energy mm -hmm. <laughs> into yourself and it yes. can all work out. So it's not that you don't have time or you don't have the money. You're just not paying attention to how you can shift your mind and re um allocate where that energy should be going where that yes. money should be going where that time should be going yes so do you have okay do you have a regimen or a ritual to prepare for your menstrual cycle i like to ask this to all my yes. guests because everybody's on some hey womb wellness woman <laughs> how are we gonna get these wounds together so is there anything that you do like prepping or leading up to or while you're on your cycle to make sure that you have a more manageable and positive menstrual cycle experience because most people are like it's dirty it's nasty i hate it and it's like, oh, <laughs> like we gotta get y'all out the mindset like it's a rite of passage it's powerful for us you manifest on those times like it's it's some real power behind being a person that menstruates so what about you yes well um the beginning of last year when i was first dealing with the pcos you know i was really i noticed because you know i know my body and i'm very in tune with it so just noticing like I just felt a little bit more sluggish and I've always had cramps and I've always had like a bit of heavy bleeding but this just became more intense like the amount of time it took me to recover like after I had my cycle and like even how much how drained I felt leading up to it so you know I started changing my diet and certain things of that nature and introducing certain herbs into uh, my ritual as well so right now currently I have an app where I try to keep track of when I'll start I usually try to not schedule too many things around that time to overload my schedule um, and also just, you know, kind of prevent me from having to reschedule on people. Uh, also, I try to really focus on my my water intake before eating lots of uh, fruits and veggies, seeds, you know, getting the proper amount of protein and iron and magnesium in my body. Um, then I have, you know, when I start to get into my cycle, I have like my little heating pads and then my, my herbal baths, my relaxing herbal baths that I'll take as well, you know, um, and then there's certain nutritive herbs I'll start taking leading up to my cycle, cycle, like nettle, red clover, things of that nature. And then, you know, once I'm on my cycle, I honestly just like honor how I'm feeling. I honor my energy levels, um. You know, I like to work out a lot, but I also, those days, I will opt for yoga instead. So I'm still moving my body, but it's in a gentle way. Um, and then as well as, yeah, keeping myself hydrated, nourished, um, setting my boundaries during that time, just really being conscious and mindful of, like, what I can handle. And also doing something creative like during that time as well yeah. just like releasing that creative energy out there and really just like honoring myself like I'm, I'm honoring like the process that my body is going through you know even though a lot of society doesn't give us that time to really take a step back for a second I like to just give it to myself whenever I can so 
That is such a dope wreck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everybody, have y'all not heard me repeat all that you said? <laughs> it's, it's all about knowing, like you said, tracking your cycle so you know when it's coming and try to limit things. You want to try to preserve your energy. Like you said, doing the baths and tending to yourself and, you know, even still moving. People say, why do you exercise when you're still in your cycle? Because you still have to have some form of movement. Just make it low impact. <clears throat> yes. Keep only doing stretching. Like you said, really mild yoga. You know, don't try to go run those three miles and hike up a mountain and do all that. Like, that's what you need to be doing like when you're in a whole other phase. Yes. So, I love everything that you mentioned. So, before we end, are there any last remarks or comments that you would like to share before we close out for the day? Yes, my remarks or comments are just to, you know, meet yourself with love and compassion because that's the only way that you're going to you know, move past certain things. It's the only way that you're going to acquire the life that you want to live because you cannot shame yourself into feeling better. You could only love yourself into feeling better, into getting better, and and that'll just spread like wildfire. So the only thing I wish for everyone is to just have compassion with yourself and meet yourself where you're at. Baby steps matter. Baby steps are important. And having a great support system as well. Beautifully said. We always talk about benchmarks. People think, okay, so I want to you know, get rid of this. I want to change this. And it's like, you have to have baby steps for that. And you got to show yourself grace along the way because nothing just happens overnight, very easily just flows into place. Normally when you really want something, you're going to be thrown obstacles and get thrown off your path. And like you said, you just have to show yourself that grace and make sure you have a solid support system and just keep going and celebrate the small wins. The small wins are very, very important. They're very important. And you will fall off from time to time. That is natural, you know, on the path to gaining whatever healthy habits you're trying to have. But, you know, the more practice you put in and the longer you do something, the time between you falling off and getting back on is just going to become smaller and smaller. Yep. It's like any other habit that you form, you know, once you get in your groove of things and going, then it just takes time to develop. So, Guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome to kickcrampsass.org. Now, feel free to subscribe and get 15% off. By doing so, you're subscribing to our newsletter and you'll receive the latest news, resources, and updates. We appreciate you for connecting with us, so we want to get you with 15% off on your first order. So go ahead and leave your first name, your last name, and your email address, and you'll have this 50% off coupon that you can use towards your first order. Now, back to the show. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We hope that you enjoyed that commercial. Now, we are going to be discussing what we have going on for the remainder of the month. We actually are going to be taking a little hiatus. We've been going ham since the year started. You know, we kicked off the podcast during Nutrition Month in March, and we always do like a mid-season break. So we're going to be taking a break over the next couple of weeks. We have to go do our detox. We tell you guys, try to detox every three months or every season. So I got to go do my raw cleanse. I got to go do my no technology. So we're going to be falling off for a couple of weeks, but we'll be back in the middle of July. Um, are there any news or events that you would like to announce, Amber, for the end of June and coming into July? Yes. So the end of June coming into July, I will be uh, holding in-person medicine making classes. I hold them uh, at the Alchemical Cabinet in downtown Las Vegas. But starting in July, I want to bring an online aspect as well. So on my website, you'll be able to go in and, you know, learn on your own about tincture making, syrup making, powders, just different ways to to work with herbs. And then as well as in the beginning of July, I'll be taking in some new um, clients when it comes to herbal wellness as well as as wellness coaching. So, yes, I'm very excited. That is so dope. Can you plug your website? And guys, you know, under yes. our resource center, under the wellness referrals, we have Rooted and Flow listed on our website. But the information that Amber's going to give right now, we're going to make sure to include in the episode description so you guys can follow up with her as well. 
Yes. So, you know, Rooted in Flow, that website, and then as well as uh, Dirty Little Hippie. That's one of my websites. That is where I have all of my herbal products on there and I do all of my herbal comp consultations. And then there is Deeply Rooted LV, which is will be my educational platform and then as well as my coaching services, too. I love it. So we're going to have all that description in I'm sorry, all of those details in the description of this episode, guys. Now, we're still accepting listeners' mail as always, so feel free to comment on this episode. Or if you would like a more personalized experience, you can email us at contact at kitcrampsass.org, and that information will be in the description of this episode. Now, to recap, guys, this was... Uh, season two, episode 16, we talked about using herbalism as an alternative to wound healing, which, which was Root in the Flow, part two episode with Amber Nicholson. All right, guys, now be sure to like our podcast, share it with somebody that you feel like that can resonate. Um, you know, we are on multiple platforms, so you can watch us on video or you can listen to us whichever your preference on the platform that you prefer to listen on now feel free to subscribe to our website so you can keep up with the latest news events and resources and each time that you do subscribe to our website we give you a 15 percent coupon that you can use on your first order on our kca store on our website be sure to also like our youtube channel because we have additional content that we offer on our channel and some new programs that will be rolling out in fall of 2024. Now, if there's not anything else, we want to send gratitude out to everybody for tuning in for today. And we want to manifest a positive, productive, and peaceful menstrual journey ahead, Menstruation Monday. And guys, we'll be seeing you in a couple of weeks. Peace.